Good evening, everyone. We're going to get the program going because there's a lot of information to take in here. And uh, we're, it's an exciting night. So, Welcome to our second open house concerning our 25-year master plan and its process. My name is Mark Runciman, CEO of Royal Botanical Gardens, and on behalf of the Board of Directors, thank you for making the time to join us at tonight's event. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the rich, rich history of Indigenous people of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Huron-Wendat nations on these lands, in particular the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. It is wonderful to see so many of you here tonight to hear and learn more about this evening's project, or this exciting project. But more importantly, we want to hear from you tonight. You know, our first open house, we were up against uh, serious thunderstorms and a Raptors championship game. Tonight, we do have some rain, mind you, but uh, it's just the lowly Maple Leafs, <laughs> albeit with a new coach, but it would appear that this is not a factor tonight. And that's from a avid Leaf and suffering fan. Please let me introduce to you the members of Royal Botanic Gardens Board of Directors who are here to, to listen, are here tonight to listen to what's being said. Can I get the board members to stand, please? We have our chair, Cliff Carson, Francis Newfeld, Peter Hargrave, and Councillor Calvin Galbraith. Is that it? Thank you very much. I will, I will talk about the teams that are working on this project in a moment. Through the help of our core funders, donors, members, staff and volunteers, Rural Botanical Gardens has become a year-round happening place with a varied and diverse operation. We're in fairly good shape financially, but we need to get to the next level. RBG's annual operating budget is now at $15 million. In 2005, it was just over $8 million. Our staff and volunteers have been working full tilt since that time to get us to this point. The reality is, for us to continue with the great work that we do here, we need more resources to do so. We now self-generate 65% of our revenues, an amount that I am extremely proud of. However, with the economic climate that surrounds us, we must plan to build upon this. At the previous open house, I provided some background on how we got to this point of developing a 25-year plan. It is important enough to repeat for those who cannot attend that event. It is because of generous gifts and support by visionary individuals that love RBG that has allowed us to go down this important planning road and it will be the, the, op the support of the community, individuals, corporations and others that will carry us into the future and help RBG achieve the ambitious goals that we are sharing with you tonight. Tonight's event is the culmination of a few important uh, pre-planning projects. Over the past several years, Royal Botanical Gardens has been working to a five-year strategic plan. The goal of that plan was to emerge as an elite organization in providing legendary guest experiences, to become more financially sustainable, and to continue as leaders in the areas of environmental stewardship and governance. We've made some great advancements in these areas, and in the financial sustainability area, we quick, quickly realized that we needed to develop a long-term master plan. In preparing the request for proposals for this initiative, the introduction, introduction section, which explains what RBG does, went on for far too many pages. Just like when someone sits next to me on a plane and asks me what we do at RBG, my response just goes on and on. As a result, we decided to go through an envisioning exercise to help capture our story and articulate what we are all about. In 2018, through the help of the firm of BB and Company and many interested individuals, including some of you that are here tonight, we created Royal Botanical Gardens Strategic Storyline, a comprehensive internal document containing the key elements of the RBG story. This was an excellent experience and one of the best decisions that RBG made in doing so. In short, our story is this. Plants are the foundation of life on Earth. And for eight decades, Royal Botanical Gardens has connected people with them. We do this not only to awaken people to plants beauty, diversity, and necessity, but also to serve as a beacon for an increasingly urgent movement to preserve plant species and habitats, and by extension, our planet. 
We dedicate our expertise in horticulture, conservation, science, and education to create meaningful and memorable experiences with our 2,700 acres of spectacular gardens, arboretum, and nature sanctuaries located within a sensitive ecological area of a large urban region that we call paradise. So, in everything it does and says and is, RBG represents the coming together of people, place, and plants. And in this coming together, there is an opening to a deeper awareness of ourselves, of our particular place on Earth, and on going even further, of our role as protectors of our planet and stewards of the environment. RBG protects over 2,400 2, acres of environmentally sensitive areas with biological diverse Carolinian forest habitat that contain the highest concentration of wild plants in the country. 20% of Canada's wild plant population can be found here, and we provide refuge to 58 plant and animal species at risk. With this ecosystem, RBG also manages Project Paradise, one of the largest freshwater marshland restoration project of its kind in North America. Not a small task when you consider all the challenges that Coots Paradise and Grandstone Creek are exposed to. I'm sure that you read today's headlines in the Hamilton Spectator regarding sewage. Not only do our natural land staff have to deal with these external and unknown conditions, they are up against Mother Nature. For example, severe storms that create massive store water runoff from the surrounding areas and record high water levels of Lake Ontario that create erosion havoc for us. Think about it, little RBG works hard every day to improve part of North America's Great Lakes system. Some days it's hard to keep positive about our restoration efforts and results. I digress. <laughs> In an age of accelerating habitat loss, the rush of humans to urban centers, climate change, and threats to biodiversity, there has never been a more critical time to turn our attention to the plant kingdom. Urban, li urban lives are increasingly complicated and nature provides the vital yet basic needs for humanity. RBG is a sanctuary where people can find refuge, peace, and recreation. We are a place, we are a place that is good for everyone's well-being, and for those who seek it, a plant education experience like no other. It is time for RBG to realize our full potential, to dream big and build on our successes in education, science, conservation, and horticulture, so we can leave a legacy for future generations. RBG aims to instill in everyone we reach a deeper awareness of themselves, their place on this planet, and their role as protectors and stewards of the environment. Our work is urgent, but requires deep and lasting commitment and perpetuity. To this end, we invite all those who share our love for plants and our understanding of what is at stake to join forces with us, to celebrate and to save what we must be, what must be humanity's most important relationship. The master plan will guide the achieving RBG's, in, in achieving RBG's goals, namely to build a financial strength and independence to serve our future and to enhance our infrastructure and amenities for the people who, who are here today and for new, more diverse audiences from local, national, and international markets. We will do this by creating new revenue streams and leveraging and enhancing our existing land use plan. We will identify the capital projects that should be undertaken over the next five years as well as a long-term long view of 25 years. You will see some preliminary thoughts and concepts on these display boards tonight, and I want to explain that these are here to stimulate discussion. A major capital fundraising campaign will be launched in the future to not only fund future projects and programs, but to deal with deferred maintenance pressures and to build our reserves for our imminent needs. We're in the preliminary phases of developing plans for this campaign, and I can assure you that you will all be hearing a lot more on this. As, for, as a not-for-profit charitable organization, your support is critical in achieving our goals. Together, we can carry RBG and its mandate onto the world stage with the fund fundamental goal of working to save our planet. Now, to the master plan. You would have to wonder who would be bold enough to take all of this on. All these aspirations at a place that is very unique and special. By special, I mean you could describe everything we do here as a tangled web. <laughs> Sitting on the board of directors for six years at the American Public Gardens Association that represents over 600 institutes that include most botanical gardens and arboreta in North America and beyond, 
I can say that one would be hard pressed to find a similar garden to ours. One that has remote garden areas, all with adjacent natural lands. And if that wasn't enough, our property spread through two cities of Hamilton and Burlington, which includes Dundas and West Flamborough. We are divided up by highways, roads, railway lines, utility easements, and water that runs through them all, and in some cases, extreme topography. It was our storyline that attracted our consultants to submit a proposal to us as they share our interests and values. RBG has been so fortunate to have selected and to be working with our consultants, MT planners, on this most important project. They are an internationally renowned firm specializing in landscape architecture, urban design, and environmental planning. Led by their CEO, Drew Wensley, and senior landscape architect and pro project manager, Tara McCarthy, they have put together a tremendous team and as you can see by the display boards around this room, they have all been extremely busy. In fact, it is overwhelming the amount of work that they have done, reminding us of what we do here and what our potential is. Their work also reminds us of what an incredible asset this community, province, and country has with the RBG. This group has definitely become part of our family, not only because of the tremendous amount of time that they are spent here learning about us all, but because they truly get us. When complete, and all of these things are always revisited, the plan will provide the roadmap for Royal Botanical Gardens to follow to ensure that our children's children and grandchildren will be able to connect with plant life in a very unique environment, fostering awareness and care for a world that is under increasingly ecological threat and while having a blast while visiting and enjoying our experiences. The MT Planners team is committed to the process of creating environments needed to sustain humanity in the 21st century and shares RBG's perspective that we have a unique connection to people, their communities, and their future generations who will all be benefactors of a healthier environment. Before I bring Drew up here, I would like to recognize the many people who are helping us. Our staff and many volunteers participated in blue sky sessions and questionnaires in the early days of this process which was extremely helpful. The Board of Directors has an ad hoc master plan review committee overseeing the project, led by its chair, Mr. Guy Shepard. If, Guy, are you here? You could stand. And other members of that committee, if you could stand as well, just to be recognized. Yeah, he's at the back. OK. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for your help on this. And then we have the working group, which is the master plan steering committee, which is our extended senior management team who a lot of you know, and Les Cam from Collier's Project Leaders, who was assisting me manage this assignment. Uh, and a special thank you to my assistant, Carrie Hands, who seems to make all things happen. And she's at the back there, too. Um, we will all have name tags. We'll be around with the MT Planners team to help uh, with any questions and to uh, pay, make notes of all the comments and input that you may provide us. Please allow me to present uh, Drew Wensley, who will then introduce his, his team and expand on this uh, evening's proceedings. Drew is a graduate, a graduate of Ryerson University with a Bachelor of Architectural Sciences, Landscape Architecture, and Urban Design. He's been with Empty Planners since the year 2000 and is a principal and CEO. During his time at Empty Planners, he has transformed the Landscape and Planning Group into an internationally esteemed, innovative, and award-winning firm. With strong focus on a natural system approach to city design, his projects range in complexity, scale, and are developed with an unyielding commitment to sustainable, resilient, and socially transformative results. Today, Drew is contributing to some of the largest and most significant city building initiatives around the world, including work in the Middle East, China, and North America. These projects share a common goal, to repair and enhance the natural systems that support us all. I'd like to read to you a section of MT Planner's proposal. Now remember, this is a very competitive market out there and, and sales does become part of the process. So here it goes. Drew's unique ability to translate vast amounts of information and multi-dimensional ideas into pragmatic environmental solution, solutions is demonstrated through his thorough understanding of complex projects from concept to construction detail. His skill set is applied to all aspects of the design and implementation process, providing clients with unparalleled level of service and an exceptional end product. It was pretty impressive when I read that. 
And although we have a way to go, I can tell you this, that statement was not false advertising. Drew, Tara, and their entire team are the real deal. Please join me in welcoming Drew Weston. Thank you, Mark. Um, where to start? I think I'd like to introduce my team, first of all. If you guys could all stand up, because really I'm going to go through this presentation as quickly as we can, because we want to engage with you. We want to talk about what you see around the room. And you know the people that are part of our team, come on, guys, stand up. Don't be shy. There's Amar, Harmon, Andre, Kiwe, Tara's there at the back waving, and Jim, you're a fundamental piece, and where's Nick? There he's standing up. So I want you to seek these guys out because they're talented, incredibly um, spirited designers and thinkers, and they have a lot to tell you well beyond this presentation. So we'll get through this presentation, and I want to describe sort of what you're seeing around the room first of all. We do feel like we're part of the RBG family. Um, it's been an incredible few months, uh, a deep dive. These guys have been sort of hiking the trails, walking and, and taking thousands of photographs. I think we have an entire hard drive full of photographs of the site throughout the seasons because they needed to see it and feel it and get to know the place uh, because it is so special. So. What you see around the room is, is work in progress. It's not final designs by any stretch of the imagination. Over on this side of the room is about the master planning process. And if you joined us in June, you would be aware that we sort of shared that process with you in its infancy. And we've been uh, working away since, since that open house and diving in a little deeper. And we'll take you through that. But uh, the RBG family is pretty special. And we've traveled uh, throughout the world looking at precedents to support the process. We've gone to Chicago and Bogota and New York and Montreal. And the resounding statements were, were jealous of what RBG has. So let's dive into why that jealousy is, is really important. So we're setting this 25-year master plan, and really the last few months have been interesting uh, process. We've been diving into policies, uh, understanding principles of the aspiration, and we're in the planning and design development stage, but your voices are really critical to our next steps. We have to root this master plan in the history, and looking back to look forward is something that we do uh, often within our work. We look to ancient systems to discover new things and apply those ancient systems to our daily modern lives. Building on a legacy that is long and really detailed. Uh, Mark, when we first started the project, unloaded boxes and boxes of information. And we've been sorting through those boxes and uncovering the incredible work by teams uh, in the past. And there's a, there's a running narrative that is really quite compelling about RBG's legacy. And we hope uh, to be a part of that. Of course, that enduring vision, uh, what we're talking about tonight is about immediate needs, but also the ripple effect of beyond the horizon. So sometimes we get in arguments about how far can we think, how big can we think. Is it 300 years? Is it 100 years? Or is it just beyond the horizon of 25? I love the fact that there's a, a young person in the audience uh, tonight because we are doing all of this for her. And I, I see you over there and I think you're pretty special for being here, so thank you. We always start with the land and as Mark pointed out, 2,700 acres, sometimes there's, they say it's 2,400 acres, but every acre is unique. And Everybody in the region seems to call this place a, a bit of a refuge from their urban lives. As we dive into technology and get isolated from the natural world, uh, RBG continues to represent something that we all need. But that need is under threat. And you know we live in uh, an area of Ontario that is rapidly expanding. And Harmon did a great job doing a deep dive on 
statistics of, of growth in the region. And you can see the incredible growth patterns of population and urban expansion within the region. What does this mean for RBG's future? Well, those pressures are going to be expanding. And today's news, it, it, under, you know, it, it defines what we're up against. And we have to uh, find ways of combating urban pressures, agricultural runoff, in the, in the world of climate change. So we put this project in within its global perspective. And we have a, a great team. We work internationally around the world. We see these common threats everywhere. It doesn't matter whether we work in the Middle East or China. All of these threats are real, and they come home. So when we talk about these global threats of climate change and urban expansion, we also understand that these land at your front door uh, as regional threats, ice storms, the Great Lakes flooding, uh, all these issues that, that are having major impacts on RBG's day-to-day -day operations. We started talking about RBG very early on as an expanding currency, that the value of RBG of this place and what it represents is going up to be the point of pricelessness, its role, its responsibility, and its care, and its duty of care by everybody, from the volunteers to the, to the board of directors, is incredible. That currency is so relevant today. So we started this process by looking at the regional systems, and that's the way we start a lot of our projects. We really want to deep dive into the zone of influence, not just the borders, not just the edges, not just the things that are happening within, but the regional understanding and its zone of influence. We go through a process of doing a deep dive assessment that gives everybody a baseline to which we want to achieve better. We want to define what is broken very early on in the process. And we want to look at how we reconnect special linkages. Ongoing monitoring is a very important aspect to what RBG does from a science perspective, from a research perspective. That is uh, fueling, uh-oh, there we go, the aspirations. And it's only that baseline that allows us to dream a bit. And tonight we're sort of dreaming together. We're talking about goals and objectives. We're talking about revenue expansion. We're talking about new amenities. But the fundamental baseline for all of this is that if the environment beneath us collapses, nothing is possible. So we've put a lot of effort into understanding that environmental baseline, catering to it first so that we could dream together. The process then leads us to critical needs. Out of the gate, what do we define, protect, and enhance? What are the first steps to a master plan that we're talking 25 years? What is the priority assessment? How do you do that? And then how do you fund it? And that's what we're engaged in, in ongoing dialogue uh, with RBG on a daily basis. We're practicing mechanisms, design strategies, and actions, how we can make everything better from the moment you walk into the RBG or whether you arrive by a Tesla or a green car or a green bus, what is that experience, what is that threshold that you go through to RBG and say, I'm leaving the built world behind and I'm entering the natural world, and that's special. That has to be special and it has to be celebrated. So throughout the process, we look at performance gains. And the master planning process, the development process is never done to us. We monitor, we test, we confirm, then we ask you, what do you think? And then we do it again, and we do it again. So when we talk about delivery of a master plan, in our minds, it never happens. We, the master plan is a live document, it has to be because there's always these dynamic changes. Health and well-being, ecological well-being, economic development, all these things are dynamic. And when we're thinking about how we implement these projects, strategies, programs, through governance, we have to think of these initiatives across scale. So we think of not only what's happening in this room tonight, but we think of our global partners or our national partners that need to step up and support us. RBG is a regional influencer, and that is really critical to going forward. We need to celebrate what they've done and where they're going. 
And when talking about outcomes, we look for identity, experience, and engagement. I want to build lasting memories for each one of you when you leave this place. And that immersion in the natural world should carry you forward, bring you health, bring you well-being, and, and really, I think, push you to support that through your kids and your grandkids to make sure that they are part of this as well. So in part of this uh, process, and I wanted to bring this up tonight, but we always go back to current headlines and we want to look at the Great Lakes headlines and which RBG is, is actually getting hit on all sides, agriculture, urban expansion, population growth, pollution, contaminants. So part of the, the master plan has to recognize this and we think that RBG is a, actually a place of hope in, in the next century. We've defined monitoring programs, and this has been ongoing. RBG's been developing uh, monitoring programs for the past few years, understanding what's coming at them, when, and at what intensity. This is an ever-changing uh, situation, and current headlines have told us that there are many threats that we have to uncover. So what do we do in order to prepare for the threats that are coming, that are here, we go through the spatial planning exercise and all these maps relate to adjacent land uses, city zoning and bylaws and all these things that control us, but we actually have to work within those and maybe push them a little farther. So our team looked at the interfaces and the frontages uh, along all of RBG's lands. What's road, what's bridge, what's a rail corridor, all of these pieces of infrastructure that separate that, that break natural systems rather than bind them. And we want to understand what's not only the outward expression of RBG, but what's the inward expression. What is passing each one of these points in terms of pollution, in terms of water, nutrients, all of those flows. We've been mapping those and thinking about ways that we could develop ecological resilience. And this map, to me, is one of the most important pieces, and I'm happy to spend a lot of time with you on this. The Ecological Resilience Plan looks at micro-interventions so that water, nutrients, and flow through the RBG site is captured, contained, cleaned, and then slow released into the system. All of the plants and flora fauna that Mark was describing, even the ones that are endangered, rely on these blue veins. And we need to make sure that these blue veins are healthy, protected, and connected. And so whenever we see a uh, rail corridor severing one of these, we say, why? Can't we go over top? Make sure that all of these things flow freely. So we're developing a series of mechanisms that will uh, really have a lasting impact, not only on Coots Paradise, Hamilton Harbor, and the Great Lakes. This represents what RBG's been doing in the last several years. It represents an aspiration to do better, and certainly, uh, take it to the, you know, to the world about the success. So we build this layer by layer, geomorphology, the topography, the steep slopes, the water systems, wetland vegetation, and the ecological communities that you guys are immersed in on a daily basis. This is the strength of the living natural system. And what we're trying to do with this uh, one slide is we have to convey that there's time and space in our planning document, in our approach and methodology, time in design. We can't take a snapshot and think we know everything because we don't. We actually have to come back time and time and time again. And the young girl over there in 10 years, 20 years, will have to come back again and have time in the design. The master plan framework then sets out the understanding that this landscape is diverse it's got these amazing communities. And character zones, each one of these places is different and represents something of, in offer to, to us. So this exercise that you see on this slide is about landing the uh, aspirations in those character zones. And whether it be a horticultural showcase or a moment at South Shore Commons, we started thinking about South Shore and North Shore Coots being a very kind of cool uh, way of orienting you guys and all visitors 
to, to the offerings at hand. And this was a, a fun process that we are continuing. We keep testing these ideas. And what all those stickies were about were spaces and places, great offerings of engagement refuge, art and nature, the programs that actually bind uh, RBG's um, you know, events and all of those things together, engagement moments, this idea of the live feed, let's share the strength of RBG and what it represents uh, to anybody who will watch it because it's got you know, a great message to tell. And in everything, we're talking about immersive quality of the landscape, the power of place, and that brings us to education, which is so critically important. That if we walk through a place, we can discover things that we didn't even know really existed, and perhaps even get a moment alone. So I've got to speed up, because there's so much to go through. But the landing sites are really important, and it sets a, a basic framework. These are your thresholds for entering the site. Some new, some existing, maybe some re-imagined. Re, uh, the landing points from the RBG Center, which is number one, the South Shore Commons, and obviously the North Shore and the Arboretum, and then of course the escarpment properties. Did everybody know that the escarpment properties were some of our favorite places to go? They're just magnificent views of what RBG represents when you stand up there at a high height, and especially in the fall, what an incredible spiritual landscape up there. So what we've done with these design concepts, and they're just sketches for now, because it's your voices that we want to populate and, and make this real with. Henry Gardens, the Visitor Center, there's certain things about the Visitor Center that are working well. There's certain things that we want thresholds of, we want the arrival moment to be in a garden, not just a parking lot or not just a, a threshold. And then the, the expansion of the collection gardens. I think that there's, in Henry Gardens, there's a lot of room to expand. And that's what we want to hear your dreams and aspirations. We certainly recognize that this, this site offers uh, opportunity for expanded conservatory that allows us to, on days and nights like this, cold and rainy, to really get into green uh, an environment that is moist and humid and reminds us of summer, summer evenings. So there's a number of programs, and we'll go through these very quickly because we're going to spend time together talking about these, I hope, in the, in the coming minutes. Lake and Garden uh, as an event uh, gathering place with a, a series of event gardens. Again, the collections palette is going to expand, and the offerings of, of all of these unique uh, garden rooms throughout the property uh, will, will expand, and there's a great deal of asp aspirations about the rock garden has been developed uh, quite well. There may be some subtle, subtle changes for operational um, modifications that would improve uh, your experience there, but generally it's been a, a great success and, and uh, a great asset to the program. Now the Arboretum is exciting because we see this as a, a living laboratory. And what a concept to have your back of house become your front of house in a way. That what we want to do with the living lab is create this visitor center that is research-based, science-based, but wow, there's so much to see there because there's ongoing propagation techniques happening uh, behind glass that everybody could see. So this is all bound together with extensive trails that take you up and in and below the ground. And we think that this uh, Arboretum uh, expansion, not only from your engagement perspective, but also the biodiversity that we want to inject into the Arboretum will be a great, great new asset. The South Shore Commons is a community hub, always has been, and we see that this could become uh, a really great asset for uh, Westdale. And you know, from a community gardens perspective, offering a forest club, uh, a gathering place for, for market in the plaza, splash pad, and a, a fun place for families in the region to just gather and, and maybe even an experimental kitchen that celebrates organically grown food right in their backyard. Princess Point is another incredible offering, and we thought about this, uh, the concept of a human reflection visitor center because of the heritage that is, is just under the ground. 
and its incredible history. So that idea of human reflection and a visitor center uh, right on the shores of, of uh, Princess Point would be a phenomenal asset. Now these are ideas and we want to test them with you tonight. If you haven't been to Boers Falls, I'm sure many of you have. I found it to be an incredibly spiritual moment for us because we stood there, listened to the falls, and, and it offers views back over uh, Coots Paradise, and we see this as a wellness retreat. We're going to talk a lot about how nature and your health are, are bound intrinsically, and this offers a, an incredible moment. Rock Chapel is another opportunity for maybe glamping and uh, that experimental farm and maybe a little softer moment for people to gather and explore this incredible edge condition. Maybe we'll bind that with a, a huge suspension bridge as well because it's right across the, the gorge from, from the wellness center. So all of these ideas have to be bound together and how we get to RBG is really an important piece to the, to the puzzle. So we've done an extensive uh, connective strategy um, process where we're looking at public transit networks and how they are to be leveraged, expanded, or harnessed. Uh, future transit options, and we're maybe going to push some of our uh, local uh, governments to support this. Uh, pedestrian and transit interfaces, of course, we want to arrive green. We want to uh, promote walkability from place to place within RBG. And the cycling network, we think, is really important as well, especially for uh, the young people that want to travel around by a bike on a weekend, see what RBG has to, to offer. And the parking network has to be thought through very meticulously because if, if it is going to be expanded, if there are going to be these urban pressures, uh, what can we do to, to harmonize parking and promote a connective strategy that uses a green bus system? that is easy to call up and how would we do that? So we're thinking about how we could develop an app that allows you to go from place to place by calling up a green shuttle. All of that would allow you to penetrate into the RBG lands and the trail network, I'm sure many of you have explored uh, in, in the recent years. The trail network is really critical because it ties us together to the national context, the regional context, as well as the city. And our team has been looking at trail features and moments and expanded offerings within the trail network, really to, to pull you through those, those uh, moments and give you a destination that is just incredible. So we talk about this public interface. Maybe it is an app on your phone that says you can enter onto this trail on this given day and this is what you're going to see and this is what you would enjoy. Uh, this is a shady area on a, th a day that is 35 degrees and uh, come and explore. So that public interface is something that we're playing with because it needs to be uh, an outreach program. There's got to be, there's so much information on the site that we want to share it through a very simple means. This is pretty exciting because uh, it offers so much detailed information and you could plan your day on the trails for instance. You could order a meal to a picnic table at Sassafras Point. Wouldn't that be great? Connect to the RBG through the series of thresholds and always education and ecology on the trail is celebrated. And we want to define character zones. Now, this process will be done for every single trail within RBG. So we're in the process of building this network of, of information amenities on the trails. This is just a deep dive that gives you a sense of the way that we're going to package and, and build these ideas together. I'm going to end, thank goodness, uh, with this concept of the environmental pulse. We talk a lot about uh, the pulse of the planet or a pulse of a region. For the first time in human history, we can see the pulse of the planet in real time. And we, uh, we understand that all of these systems that are listed on the right are in constant collapse or a state of thriving. But we want to raise the bar from survival to thrive. So in all of this, in all of our work, we want to bind environmental health to your health and vice versa. 
So let's celebrate environmental health together through engagement and offerings at RBG. Let's get out, walk, bike, hike, and explore RBG's great landscape and understand these systems have to be thought of through scale and how they affect you, your human body, and vice versa, how we affect the ecology in which we celebrate. So with that, I want to just stop there and I'm gonna ask Jim to come up and talk a bit about your input and how we can get more information out of you, talk about your hopes, your dreams, and aspirations. So thank you very much. Thank you, Drew. Um, you know, it's been important to us from the beginning of this process that it be a community-driven plan, and that's the reason that you're all here tonight. Um, as we've thought about that, we also conducted a survey of community residents to get a sense of their perception, their experiences, um, and really most importantly, their values that they connect with RBG. And we had over 1,200 um, residents from the local community respond to that survey, which really shows how much people care about the future of RBG. Um, and what was interesting was, you know, we, we found some things you might expect, people saying, you know, it's things like coming to see the flowers and the trees and the plants that they find valuable. But they also said things like, it's important to my health and well-being, and that's one of the reasons that I, that I engage with RBG. They said it is to learn something new, whether or not that's um, the learning about the horticulture, um, the history of the lands, um, climate science. They said things like entertaining friends and family. We realize that RBG is a gathering place for the local community. But first and foremost, the thing they said above and beyond was it's a connection to nature. And Drew mentioned you know, that idea that RBG is a refuge from the expanding urban environment. And we heard that over and over again from the group. And what's important for us as we think about identifying what these values are, um, they really serve as the undercurrent for all of the visioning that Drew just talked about. As we think about what the RBG experience will look like in 25 years, we want to ensure that it aligns with those values that the local community shared with us. And the second part is, as we also think about one of the goals of the master plan is engaging new and expanded audiences. We realize that RBG is a special place and we want to share that special place with the world. But what we want to ensure is that in no way is your experience being depleted because we cater to an external audience. Instead, our hope is that in future visits, you'll be able to connect with visitors from across the world who share those same passions for health and well-being for education and importantly, you know, that connection to nature. And that RBG will be able to facilitate that shared experience because it's built upon those shared values. Um, so with that being said, we invite you to come take a look, um, engage, take a look at the boards. If you have questions, as Drew mentioned, uh, the staff, the team will be around to help answer some of those. Um, and lastly, if you didn't have a chance to participate in the survey, we actually have a blank board in the back of the room with some markers for you to leave your thoughts. So if you have thoughts on RBG in general or the work that you've been um, seeing tonight, we invite you to come take a look in the back of the room, just write us a note, let us know what you'd like to see in the future, and uh, thank you for joining us. Okay, I'm to... Uh Get everybody's, my job now is to get you off your butts <laughs> and look at these boards and start communicating with the, all the teams that will be around. So um, I will wrap it up at the end when we've got to get out of here. Um, but uh, for now, please uh, join everyone and thank you again for, for your attention and your interest at Royal Botanical Gardens. Thank you.